Look at my gauge and trowel. I don't know what it is, but I think something might be missing. Yeah, it's uncomfortable because it needs a handle. And it does, you see. Well, I've had this thing donkey's years. It's an old Ragni, I think it is, if I remember rightly. And I used this for bedding in uh, hips and ridges, you know, the tiles, the round tiles. Now, the thing is, you see, it gets dunked in a bucket, the handle gets soaked wet, and after a period of time, they rot out. And that's kind of what's happened to this one. Even the, uh, the little uh, spigot here, that seems to be all a bit corroded and what have you. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a new handle that we are, yeah. Um, because we're doing some pointing work. Because it's also very good for pointing, you see. When you're pointing stonework, you've got to fill all the joints up. It's just ideal for that, because it's rounded, uh, pointy bit. <laughs> rounded point anyway, that bit there, the rounded bit on the end there. And this does need a bit more clean-up. Now, it was covered in absolutely layers and layers of cement and other powdered materials. I've sanded most of it off. It still needs some TLC. It's, it's proved to be a bit of a bugger to get off, to be fair. And also a bit of pitting on the back there. But, yeah, it doesn't matter. Still does its job, you see. So what we're going to do is we're going to shape this old handle up, okay? Uh, and yes, I could use the, the lathe, which happens to be behind me over there, but we're not going to, because I understand that, or realise, not everybody's got a lathe. Now, if I was using a bit of green bit of wood, I wouldn't recommend you, maybe uh, a bit of ash or something like that. You could do that with an axe or whatever, you can just clean it up that way. But we're not going to do it, we're going to use a hand play. That's what we're going to use, a hand play. It's simple. So I'm going to bring you down to my uh, dog here. Yeah? This is my dog. Which happens to be <laughs> this is a, this is a multi-tool blade. It's absolutely ideal. It works so well. I just do that. And to be in there, you see, all right. So start off with your square metal. I've already started doing it. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't gonna make a video. And I thought, what the hell is make a video? So let's make a video. We're gonna make it into a handle, and we're gonna install it onto that. What we are. All right. Hopefully, it will be good. Now I've got to really like something here, all right? Well, dear Mrs. does do a lot of the pointing, and she's got much smaller hands than me. I've got to bear that in mind, you see, I can't make it too chunky. For me, I like to have a nice and chunky, I do. Oh, I like, I like them big, I do. Yeah, oh. <laughs> oh, that I do. So anyway, <laughs> I'm going to keep lining that down, right? Putting a bit of a taper on the end at the same time. Because what you want is you want a taper on. And the reason why I have a taper on the handle is so as it pulls, it sort of just slides straight off. If, that was, if those two faces were parallel, the handle will just slides straight out of your hand. So you, you need a bit of a... A bit of a taper. But first of all, I'm going to concentrate on rounding it over, making it round. Okay. Uh, oh, no, it's not much more, is it? Uh, I'm going to sort of a round and a bit of a taper, so I'm quite happy with that so far. Now I need to think about the actual ferrule itself. I need to uh, create, a, make this into a tenon on the end to accept the ferrule. That's what we're going to do now.
Oh, we're getting there. You've got to be careful at this point, though. When you're chiseling down like so, you could accidentally take too much material out. So, like, you see, they'll probably take too much of a bite. So just, uh, it's okay, though. Didn't go quite deep enough with the saw at that point. But you'll get there. You've just got to be careful. You know? You've just got to be careful. You could sharpen the, the piece of tubing that you're going to use for a ferrule, and that would actually do the cutting for you if you wanted to. But I'm using a chisel at the moment. I'll finish off that way, probably. Then cut the, then cut the uh, tubing off. And then... Um, drill the hole. Well, you'll see in a minute, won't you? Oh, don't give too much away, do I? Dear. Now, if you use tubing that's just too thin in the wall, what will happen is the wood can expand and it'll just it'll split the ferrule as it gets wet. So you don't want to do that. I love this old chisel. It's an old acrylic handled chisel. Or salad oil, whatever you call it. It used to be my father's years and years ago. It used to be that short. <laughs> it's quite a nice length now. I quite like using it. All right. Not just because of the farmers, but because it's just nice to use. So now I'm going to try and use the tube to finish off the pla uh, the cutting. So you treat the tube as the chisel. Hit it with the tube with the mallet. Hopefully it'll work. Might not be enough yet. You pairing it off like that. Now I've cut more one way than it is the other. You've got to watch that. Otherwise what happens is you'll just end up um, have the skewiff spigot. Or spigot. Oh, tang. Sorry. The tang will go in skewiff. So you need to make sure that's it. That's doing it. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. I don't think it's going to come off in a hurry. It wasn't the plan. <laughs> what I'll do is once, I've, um, once I'm happy that it's on far enough, a bit more cutting around right here, I'll, I'll carry on playing the handle to suit the ferrule. It's a bit of a problem somewhere doing it. It's quite easy, obviously. I say it's easy. It's, it is easy, actually, to cut all that on the lathe if you don't want the lathe. But if you haven't got a lathe, how are you going to do it? You know? Just, just one way you can do it. Remember, I can see it's not quite centre, but that'll be right. I will. I've got to take more off the handle this yet. A bit more planing to do. Can't think. Oh, there that's so. Nearly at the bottom. It's off centre by about ooh, three mil, two mil, no, about two mil. Right, you can say, why is that so long? We're going to cut it off. So it doesn't matter, does that? I don't want to do now. I want to like, carry on playing this handle to, and then clean up with a rasp probably around near the ferrule. And I'm going to cut that felt a tad longer than it needs to be. Because once I've got the, the tool in, I'll shut it. You'll see. You'll see. You'll see. That'll be another stage. Right. Oh, it's like, oh, it's like a baton. <laughs> Bashing people with. That's what it's for, isn't it? That's it. Yeah, I'll get it. All right. So that's okay that are. Where's it the highest? There. Probably a good idea to reduce the cut on the on the plane just touch. Half a turn back, then take up the tension, take up the little bit of spare. Remember that Caroline's got little doiny ends. I'm quite happy with that. Right. We will make it look pretty, but the thing is, you see, it doesn't really matter. No. But we, I am going to do that. I'm going to make it you know, clean it all up. And, Sand it all up nicely, take all the arises off, round the end up, even though I know full well it's going to end up in a bucket of water. All this could be done on the lathe if you've got one. What's a better technique? Right, let's grab that. Uh, Any mini mind you mowing? Rasp here. Oh, it's a bit 
bit aggressive. Or just a little bit of sandpaper. Let's give it a bit of a... Let's that with old sander. Oh, quite like that. And that's got a bit of a curvature, which is quite nice. Which makes sense. So it's going to be on there like so. Got a bit of a, a, bit of a curve. Is it ergonomic? That's all deliberate. Oh, okay, it wasn't. I, I can't pull that one off, can I? So anyway, we're going to sand that up. I'll use a hand sander for that. Hand sander, or shall I use air sander? Let's use an air sander. Let's concentrate on the highs so it's not like this lumpiness to it. It's getting there. I always say, how are you going to know where to cut it off? I'm not going to cut it off yet, no. Because you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to blacken that handle, yeah. I'm going to spit on it, yeah. I'm going to ebonise it, no, 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 no. I'm just going to blow torch it, yeah. I'm going to get all aggressive, yeah. <laughs> you know it is, yeah. Well, I'd be using my old blow torch, but I'm out of gas. Don't want some weird, mate. Let's set light to all this wood shavings on my bench. Have a massive fire. Right. You, 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 if you wonder what this does, it carbonizes the, the wood, which makes it more resilient, uh, resistant to uh, resistant to bug damage. If you've got tools that sit in a box all the time in an old barn like I do, then you really want to try and uh, prevent bug damage. It also looks pretty cool once it's done. And the carbon also helps prevent what? <laughs> the end grain is the most important to do. Like a flaming torch in a minute. <laughs> you don't want to too close because the blue part of the flame is the coldest part of the flame. So you need to be far enough back just to be at the end of that blue part of the blue the blue bit of the flame you want the more orangey bit when you're doing this too close it'll take longer but it isn't as hot I don't recommend doing this when you've got shavings all over the bench no 
not a good idea. Let's turn around. Got, oh, nearly there. Isn't it? Is that a bit there to do, you know? Let's turn around. Oh, nearly there. Let's there. Snap, crackle, and pop. It goes. Well, black and done. I'll be sooty this hour. All sooty and hot. So I like sanding. This is 150 grit. Not the best paper, I need to invest in some decent papers. <laughs> oh, it's like a hand warmer. This is a piece of old old oak. What you wondering? God, it's so hot. <laughs> Oh well. Alright, before I do some more with that, I'm going to mark where I got a cut. And to do that is actually easy. All you need is something to go down the end of the hole. <laughs> you know how it goes. You've got to have something that'll go down the end of the hole. And I'm going to use a welding rod. And that'll tell me where the end of the piece of wood is. So I've got that down there like so. Now I'm going to grab a piece of tape. I'll leave it off the sword, don't leave it on there anymore. Save so recycling. And we're gonna mark that where the so that basically represents the end of the wood where it finishes in this tube. And now I know where that finishes, so now I can mark it where I want it to go. Just grabbing a bit of tape. Now, I don't want to go right hard up on the end. I want to come in a little bit. I want to, I can't fold it too far over because it, it, it just won't work. It's in the right mess. So I'm just going to go just a little bit. About there. I'm going to bring it around here like so. And then I can line up with the paper. That'll do. So that's where I'm going to cut it, is there. Okay. Oh, it's still warm. Oh, it feels nice. Let's take my hands. <laughs> I've been carbonated, I have. They put me in carbonite. Right now, to cut that, really, what a quite a fine blade because it's a thin tubing. But I, I don't know what I've got in my saw at the minute. Is that a fine one or is it? No, it's not. Oh, it is. Is it fine? Is it 24? No, it's an 18. It's quite coarse. Mm. But I'll have to do because we're sitting there. Probably judder a bit. <laughs> I was watching Rich Kruger the other day um, demonstrating how to use a. Uh, a hacksaw. Well, as long as you don't kink the blade, something to worry about. You, you just carry on as you are. You just don't speed up. That I do agree with. Best thing to do is make sure you've got enough support. If you start kinking the blades, when the blade will, will snap. I'm doing a kind of tag hand at the moment because I'm trying to do it without moving the camera. No, please use all the blade. You'll know where you haven't, or when you haven't, because the, you'll feel it stop, because it'll be where the blade is more, has more teeth. This one's quite old, this blade is. I'll start juddering in a minute. See, 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 it's where the, <clears throat> so I'm cutting thin tube, and I've got an 18 TPI tooth. It's way too coarse. I want a 22 or a 24, really, for doing this job. You see there, it's actually protruding past. You don't have to do what I'm about to do, to be fair. But by about three or four mil past the actual piece of wood, which was my intention. I'll show you why in a minute. Place it in the vice, it sits on top of the rails. Like I say, I would be doing this in the other vice. 
But I'm doing it in this vice. So sit on top of the one that metal rails, because I've got to do a bit of a bit of beating I am, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'll do a beating sitting down there. Oh crap, I'm lazy, isn't I? Now you could put the tool in first if you want this. Drive it in first, but I'm not gonna worry. Nope. I'm just gonna tap that in like so all the way around. Yeah, listen. Get the right hammer, that's a flipping pin hammer. So when I'm, each time I make an impact, what I'm actually doing is I'm, I'm not just hitting it on the side, I'm sort of trying to stroke, I'm sort of doing that sort of motion against it, I'm sort of encouraging it to go one way. I don't know if you can see that. I'm, I'm sort of that sort of action. It's all about the hips, you see, even though I'm sitting down. You don't want to do is get too carried away. You need to make sure you keep take, moving it around in the voice. Otherwise, what you'll do is you'll create a split here on the edge, on the, well, on the edge, which I don't want to do. So I just want to get part way over first, or the right side, part way over, and then I'll just keep turning it around until I've got what I want. I want done. See, normally what you do with this, you say. You heat them up, drop them on, and they'll, they'll, they'll expand and then shrink onto it. But that was quite tight, you just saw how I was doing that. I was thinking about how people, all named people can do it. Yeah, you might not have all those gear to do that sort of thing. Or maybe it, it worries you a bit, you don't, you know, if you don't even try, because um, you're a bit frightened of getting burnt or something. But this works, I've done this loads of times. It's literally a piece of curtain pole. <laughs> So either that or it's a staunching for a worktop or something. Yeah, a bit like a breakfast bar or something. I can't remember. I'm just in my box of bits of metal. When you, this um, bit I'm doing at the moment, it's not just about, oh yeah, make it look nice on the edge. So you haven't got the rough edge. It's about, you're creating like uh, this angle, so you're creating some strength. That's what I keep telling myself. Honest. That's what it's for. Wrong, so this is about me using what I have got. Just a, well, there's a bit of wood, that'll do. There's a bit of steel tubing, that will do. All I've got to do is apply a little bit of skill and a little bit of time and then it'll be good. It'll all be good. And in the end of the day, if it works, is it wrong? So I've used, okay, I use electric sander, but you don't have to use electric sander. So far, so good. I'm still, I could have done burning in there a little bit better. Okay, there's a little bit of white around the edge there. I missed a bit on the burning. Do, 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 do. But I'm going to leave it alone. I'm, if, I, if I'm worried, I'll just put a bit of boot polish on it because what I don't want to do is heat that ferrule up and make it loose. All right, is there any nasty bits on there? I think so. Oh, is there? I'm happy with that. So now what I've got to do is drill the owl and drive that in. And I'll also use some glue. Not PVA, no. Because be <laughs> that won't work. And what I've used in the past is um, PU glue, that, that works quite well. Or Aerodite, which I might use in this, in this case, because it will get wet and the Aerodite will be really solid in the hell. But it feels nice. It's still warm, you know. It's literally still hot. I still feel that. It's nuts. Not so all hazy or nuts. So I'm going to drill out. Like that. I'm not going to use a pillar drill or anything like that. But I do need to make sure, though, is that I get the, the hole the right size. It's probably, what, 8 or 10 mil. So we'll use some verniers. 
it's probably a 10 mil hole, isn't it? I think what I'm going to do is go nine and a half. Have I got a nine and a half here? Uh, no, I've got a nine. Let's try nine and give it a wiggle. The reason why I don't go to the, right, you know, the, the correct size because this is corroded and what have you, and it's like thinner now, smaller dimension. And I, I, I want some, I want it to squeeze onto it. If that makes any sense, got to, got to squeeze. You see, got to squeeze. Right, and then to make sure it's in the centre. I'm going to use a small draw bit first. Use a brattle to get you started. You can drill an end grain. You see, it's going to be quite easy to wander. In the middle, yeah, maybe that's in the middle. So, mining down it, make sure I drill in line. So now we're going to go on to the nine mil. Oh, that needs changing. Oh, well, it just won't do it, will it? Now, is that long enough? A bit longer, a bit deeper. A bit of nine and a half mil. A bit of a bit of reaming. Oh, I got reamer, you know. <laughs> Mm. Is that too much? Right, anyway. <laughs> so that's going to be driven into there. I've got to make sure I do it at the angle I want. Because I remember me saying that it's a, it has a bit of a... It's not perfectly true. And it would make more sense to make use of it. Which was probably about there, I think. That's it. There. So that's the direction I want it to be. Now I could just drive it in there if I wanted to. Even with some super glue, have you just what the, the super glue will do? It'll seal, um, and the, or any glue you use, it'll seal the hole around the woodwork, around the, around the hole. Eventually, obviously, it'll help lock it in as well because all these little dimples where the pimples are, where the rust was, where the pitting, that'll, um, that'll lock into those and help prevent it from pulling out. You don't want to pull it out, you know, not too soon. Oh, no. that's what she said. Right, anyway, so we're going to be driving that into there now. That hangs up there, that looks good to me. Need a bit more, a bit more reaming out. Need a bit too tight in it. Too tight, you're going to split your handle. You don't want to do that either. Right, I'm going to use super glue. I think is it this? Do do do. do what about activate at this stage? I'm just going to whack the down there like so, as you see. Yeah, yeah, get in there. This is potentially miter stick by, uh, or wood stick, was it miter stick? Uh, miter stick, these are by uh, Eureka Glues. And they sort of sponsor me. There's no money exchange in hands, but they um, send me glues and what have you. So, um, so far, I've been quite impressed. I'm very impressed, actually. Oh. <laughs> Things happen. Right, let's make sure it's the right position again. There, that's it, there. I'm going to tap it in. Bring it up a bit. Oh, hello. Put the rail. In that's tight. Oh, I'm there. A bit hydraulic. As I was putting it in a hydraulic, it went, I don't know if you heard that, but was, that's the wet, the wet glue being squeezed up the sides. It's pretty gum tight. I don't think I need anything in there because once that gets wet, that's going to tie up even more. I think that's nice. I think that's yeah, I think that's right. And on there. And we'll put oil on it. Protect it as best that we can. 
And the best way to protect this is not to leave it in a flipping bucket. <laughs> <laughs> like they've been doing. I need some oil. Oh, there's some oil here. Some linseed oil. Yeah, just, just good old linseed oil. There's not much left on there, but it's enough there to do its job. Oh, I was going to put some boot polish on there, wasn't I? I'll do that. I'll do that in a minute. Not matter. Actually, it's doing the job anyway. Yeah, black hands. This is lovely for that, you are. Oh, you made my hands all black, did you? Since she's the one that's been pointing at them. And she's quite good at it, actually. But she does need a bigger tool. And she's been using little tiny ones, and it's like taking forever. And she was using this before, but it's um, the handle broke. Fell off. Literally, just fell off. Now we need a rag. Well, I'll leave that to soak for a bit first. But for the purpose of the video. Looks like it looks like crown crown uh, handle now, don't it? Or crown tools. There we go. How's that? I think that absolutely that looks absolutely gorgeous. And considering to be covered in cement and, and lime and god knows what else, it's not worth cleaning. Should I clean that a bit more? Might do. I might give a bit more time on that. But what do you mean? That's right, isn't it? So no labels used. I use my uh, little saw dog that I put in the vice, which is literally some fine mul a blunt fine multi tool blade with the teeth in it. And that grips the end of, end of a piece of wood. It started off as a square piece of wood, and I made it round and tapered like that. You know, a bit of TLC, and just uh, just take your time, you know, and just enjoy the process. I, I, okay, I got a lot of, uh, had to put your, uh, curly shavings on the floor, but so what? That's woodworking for you, isn't it? That's what you do, okay? Now, a good gauge and trowel cost you 30, 40 euros to buy, if you can get one here, or pounds, sorry, pounds to buy. I've got a Ragni or a Marshall Tanner or something like that. Well, um, I got this already. I made the handle for nothing. The ferrule is literally a piece of tube, okay, and a piece of oak I had laying about. Don't have to be oak, no, just don't choose a softwood, that's all I'd say. Beach or something like that would be fine, ash if you can get some, but you know, oak would be is just as well. Anyway, so there you go, and now I've got a trowel again, a gauging trowel. Anyway, if you're most kind, big old like button and maybe subscribe to the channel, you then get a warm fuzzy feeling in your pocket every time I upload another video, and I hope you'd be excited about that. Mm. It's very gauging, isn't it? Very gauging. Get, 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 no, engage, engage. No, oh god, I give up. Toodaloo.